I'm going to show you a fairly easy uh, method for time remapping in Maya that I used recently on a project. So to begin, I created this uh, quick bouncing ball animation that we're going to start remapping. So first, we're going to create a time remap node, and that's, uh, we're just going to, we need any node that will accept an attribute, so I'm going to create a locator. So create locator, call my locator time remapper, and I'm going to lock and hide all of these channels, because I don't need them. And I'm going to take my node and create an attribute. Go to modify, add attribute, and I'll call my attribute time. I'm going to set it as a float value, and I'm going to leave no minimum, no maximum, no default. So I'll add it, and now I have a time attribute that's set to zero. So to make it easier, I only keyed this on three channels, and I locked and hid all of the other channels, because I don't need them. So now let's get our connections going. So let's uh, select the, I'm going to select the sphere and go into my hypergraph. And as you can see, here are my anim curves. and these tell you where the anim curves are going so the output of each so p sphere 1 translate x dot output goes into translate x and so on and so forth but what's also happening and it's not showing you is that uh, there's an input connection in these nodes and it's uh, defaulted to input to time to the timeline so we're going to kind of override that and uh, put in our own time attribute so that we can quickly remap those values into our value. So to do that, let's go into the connection editor. Window, general, editors, connection editor. And we're going to use the time remapper for output and we'll select each of these anim curve nodes and we'll put it in the input and we'll go find our time attribute and connect it to the input attribute and we'll do that for all of them and now if you scrub through it it's not moving at all and it's not moving because our time remapper is actually set to zero so if we key it at if we key it at our uh, our time range we'll have our animation lined up and we have our animation that's uh, going at one to one so now if I want to actually adjust this animation I could go into the graph editor for my time remapper and this is uh, now my time remap graph curve so I could animate it just like a regular graph Let me. Uh, make this easier to see so if I take my time remapper node and I wanted to start slowing down on this bounce right here I'll key it over here on the following two bounces and then key it at the top of the bounce and I could adjust it adjust my curve so now it's gonna slow down 
and then continue on. I could even make the animation shorter by moving this key here. And now it'll start speeding up at the end. So I got basically a perfect time remap that's uh, easily adjustable through the, through the curve editor. So you could do like some really weird things and you could do some cool things with this. You might be wondering why you'd uh, want to do a time remap instead of just adjusting the curves. Well, uh, oftentimes you'll have animation that uh, you're happy with and the only thing that needs changing is, uh, is some time remapping at the end or something like that and you want to do it non-destructively. This, uh, this is a good way to do it non-destructively. And that's all there is to it.